So, in the previous two videos, we talked about finding area under this standard normal curve to the left of a given z-score, to the right of a given z-score, and now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about finding the area between two z-scores. Again, the problem's going to look something like this. What's the probability that we have a z-score that is between, say, negative 1 and 1? And the way that we're going to calculate this is exactly the same as what we did before. We are going to use normal CDF and we're going to describe the interval that we're interested in. We're trying to go, say, from negative 1 to 1. So we're looking at this area here under the curve. And what we're going to do is we're just, we don't even have to worry about those infinities. We just put in negative 1, comma 1. Again, it's probably talked about in the calculator videos, but when you put in a negative one, make sure you use the negative key next to the decimal point, not the minus symbol. So you type in normal CDF, negative one, comma one. And when you plug that in, you'll find that it's 0.6814. Just double checking the calculator. Nope, 6827, sorry. 6827. And let's just look at three of these real quick. The area between negative 2 is less than z, which is less than 2. Normal CDF. Negative 2, comma 2. And when you put that into your calculator, you will end up getting 0.9545. And if you try the probability that z is between negative 3 and 3, what you'll see when you type in normal CDF, negative 3 comma 3, the number that you would get there is 0.9973. Three. And if you look at these numbers, what you're really talking about, since these are z-scores, is what's the probability that you are within one standard deviation of the mean? What's the probability that you are within two standard deviations of the mean? What's the probability that you're within three standard deviations of the mean? When you look at that, that should remind you of something that we talked about a long time ago, when we were talking about the empirical rule. It said that 68% of your data, if your data is generally bell-shaped for the distribution of your data, 68% land within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% land within two standard deviations of the mean. 99.7% land within three standard deviations of the mean. This is where those numbers came from that we talked about back in Unit 1.